The latest film in the DCEU is rated R and lets Harley Quinn step into the lead. So let's talk about it. After breaking up with the Joker, Harley Quinn finds herself on the run from everyone she's ever wronged, as well as teaming up with some unexpected allies. So going into this movie, I was incredibly skeptical. Right off the bat, I thought it was weird that they were doing a Birds of Prey movie starring Harley Quinn. I didn't like the look of the first images that they put out, and all the trailers seemed to have kind of a confused tone to me. So I actually wasn't all that excited for this film. How did it turn out? I'll tell you in just a second. First, tell me what you thought down below in the comment section or what were your or are your expectations for the film? With that said, let's get started talking about the good. And I'm pleased to say I was totally wrong about this film. It was an absolute blast from the beginning to the end. Over the next week, you're gonna hear a lot of comparisons of this movie to Deadpool and they make a good bit of sense. Both have non-linear storytelling, they're irreverent, they're hyperactive, they have the lead character narrating the film, they have meta humor all sprinkled throughout. So the comparisons are fair, but this isn't like a rip off of Deadpool. It has that same energy, but it does something very different with it. With Deadpool, it was kind of a straightforward revenge story told in non-linear fashion. This has a lot more in common with Guy Ritchie's first two films, Lock, Stock and Two Smoking Barrels, as well as Snatch, where it has these intersecting narratives dealing with kind of a criminal underground there's a MacGuffin out there that characters are trying to get told all out of order and it'll show you something, then it'll rewind a little bit, show you how a different character got to that point in time. All done in a way that's very interesting, keeps your mind engaged, and just feels like a fresh, interesting way to tell a story. Like the movie keeps showing you this nightclub sequence from different characters perspectives and how that night played out. And even that kind of reminded me a little bit of how Arrested Development treated some of its storylines on that TV show. And when I make all these comparisons to Deadpool, Snatch, Arrested Development, they're meant as very big compliments. Next thing you have to talk about here is the cast and almost the entire cast is a ton of fun. Two of the obvious standouts are Margot Robbie and Ewan McGregor. Here here, Margot Robbie gets to go full Harley Quinn. Of course, you get the zany antics, the weird kind of her mind and how she interprets the world around her. She gets in on the action and gets a ton of fantastic action sequences, but she also gets to emote a lot more in this film where you see kind of the character there, not just the cartoon character. And that was a really nice touch that they really made a character out of her. And then you have Ewan McGregor as Black Mask and he is just so flamboyantly fun yet terrifying at the same time. His character has all these nuances and quirks about how he wants the world to be around him and how he wants people to behave. He can just snap at the most petty thing and it's so fun to watch. Well, at the same time, adds this tension into all the scenes. And Ewan McGregor's performance is made even better by Chris Mencina as Victor Zaz is kind of like his lead henchman. And he has this subtle, excitable creepiness that is just fantastic in the movie. He's such a gross, nasty person, and he's just joyful in what he's doing, but in kind of these subtle ways where you could just see him getting excited about being about to do something horrible to someone, and he just has this great dynamic back and forth with Ewan McGregor, which is kind of agging him on, and all those nuances of Ewan McGregor's personality that makes him so quirky. Victor Zaz is trying to feed into that to get him to snap so that he can do crazy stuff wonderful dynamic. Another great thing about this movie was the action. This might have the best action of the entire DCEU. Like Batman v Superman has the warehouse fight scene that's great. Wonder Woman has some nice shots in it. But all of the action sequences here are both choreographed and shot beautifully. There's a bunch of like artistic flares and the way they decided to stage the sequences. So part of it, Harley Quinn goes to a police station and she's shooting stuff that's creating these big clouds of these big vibrant colors and confetti and it's in slow-mo and it just makes for awesome shots. Another sequence has her fighting guys in a sprinkler system while doing these flippy kick things and it's cool choreography shot in a way where you can see what's happening, but there's also an aesthetic about it, an atmosphere that just makes it an actual gorgeous shot. And what she's doing in the fights, it's not what Batman was doing 
doing that made that thing cool, or Wonder Woman, who's the super powered person, she feels like this acrobatic person that's very flexible and can do flippy kick things, but she's also Harley Quinn, so she's bag grabbing bags of cocaine to hit people with them. Also in regards to the action, it can be quite brutal. There's a lot of broken legs inside of this film where Harley Quinn is just destroying these guys by going for their knees, and it just shows limbs turning in ways that they are not supposed to turn. To this point, it also can be graphically violent in certain sorts of ways with Victor Zaz and what he really enjoys doing. This is not a movie for kids. It's rated R, so you should know this, but it is a rated R movie for the language, for the graphic violence, drug content, a bunch of different reasons. It is not a movie for kids. But one final thing, it's also really funny from beginning to end, it's being narrated by Harley Quinn. So you're seeing all of this interpreted from her perspective, her weird view on things, her kind of take on all the people that she meets. It'll do like a running of the grievances that she has with the person, why they might be out to get her. Just finds every little opportunity for a joke. There's some jabs at the genre, kind of like what Deadpool did, poking fun at the tropes. And there's some of that inside of this in the treatment of the character and having a bit of fun, how all of that played out. But in general, this is just an incredibly entertaining movie that's funny and has a great way that it tells its story. The action is fantastic and the characters are a lot of fun to watch. But from there, let's move on to the mixed aspects of the film. None of these are actual criticisms of the film, but they are things I wanted to talk about. First off, this movie should not be called Birds of Prey. It should be called Harley Quinn and the Birds of Prey. Harley Quinn is the lead in the film. It's not really an ensemble film. There is kind of a very broad base of side characters that are very prominent, but very clearly, Harley Quinn is front and center from beginning to end. I'm gonna say something real quick that if you don't wanna know anything going into it, you might consider it a spoiler. I wouldn't say that this is a spoiler. Just jump ahead about 20, 30 seconds. I'm gonna start in three, two, one. Like the actual part where they come together is very late into the movie. It's well into the second half of the film where they actually kind of team up in the first version of the Birds of Prey. It's not like they, that's what the movie's all about. It's very late in the film. So to call the film Birds of Prey is very misleading. Second thing to talk about, the I believe there are quite a few things in the trailers that are cut out of the movies. I can remember two separate jokes that were prominent in the trailers, like not just kind of throwaway little things, but prominent focuses of the trailers that were cut out. Third thing, there's not really a post credit scene, but there is something. There's something at the end, a little bit of a joke for the audience, but there's not a big sequence. If you're waiting till the very end, hoping for a tease of the Batman or Wonder Woman, something like that, that does not happen. There's just a little bit of a joke for you. From there, let's move on to the bad. The first thing that comes to mind is that with all kind of the time jumping, non-linear storytelling, hyperactive cutting at certain points in time, it could be confusing. There's one point in time in particular where it's playing the narrative forward and then it goes back and retells a whole lot of stuff and then it cuts back to that point. And I had to like pause in the moment and be like, okay, what was happening? Who, who knows what? At what point in time did they learn this specific information? And that's you shouldn't be that confused while seeing a movie. Not a big deal, but there are elements of that in the film. Second thing, Mary Elizabeth Winstead and Ella J. Bosco felt like the weak links inside of the cast. Almost everyone else is really good. And then for different reasons, each of their performances felt a bit off. Ella J. Bosco just, felt like a younger actress. She's next to some people that are in the Oscar category and she just felt not quite in their league. Her delivery wasn't as sharp. And then Mary Elizabeth Winstead, her character is written to be kind of awkward inside the story. There's a, a joke that goes throughout the film about what's going on with her that in certain ways is kind of an excuse for I didn't her, me not thinking that she was all that great. I just thought it felt kind of flat. There was a clever idea that they were doing with her that I just didn't find as convincing as I found everyone else, even with kind of the safety net of the jokes that they were making. Anyway, those are very minor issues with the film. Couple things that I noticed that I wasn't crazy about, 
This is a movie that I found incredibly, incredibly enjoyable and absolutely blew my expectations out of the water. Real quick before I give you my final take on this one, be sure to tell me what you thought down below in the comment section. Did you love it? Did you hate it? Are you somewhere in between? My take isn't the right take. It's just my take and I would love to hear yours. Also, after this video, if you want more of kind of my videos talking about DC movies, check out this playlist right up here. I've done a whole bunch of rankings talking about all of the different DC movies in different ways and at different points in time. If you've enjoyed this video, there's something up there that you'll love. So the DCEU had a pretty rough start a few years back where it felt like they were trying way too hard to build a shared universe. But over the last couple of years, they are really succeeding by not trying to build that shared universe, but by allowing directors to kind of tell their own stories that stand on their own. And this is another example of a unique, distinct addition to the genre. It's fun, it's funny, the characters are enjoyable, I love the action, and the way the story was told was distinct and interesting in and of itself. Or to put it quite simply, this was one of the most fun experiences I've had in the theater in quite a while. I'm gonna go all the way up to an A-, minus. it's an 8.5 on the entertainment scale, and you should definitely go see this film. Be sure to tell me what you thought down below. If you want more DC content now, check out that playlist right over there. Thank you so much for watching, and keep talking movies too much.